now coming to business and success in, in general, what do you think? What, what do you think you can list like five blue blueprints that you can say these are the blueprint that anyone possesses can come out so it's bound to come out successful in this part of the world? Well, the, my first one is godliness. And I know people will say godliness, what will you say, religion? But the reason I say so is that like, if you truly fear God, right, and you develop character as a result, yes. people will notice and they will help you. you know, the problem we have in this country is that like, we just don't have enough people who truly fear God. I'm not talking about going to church and I include all of us in it. You know what I mean? When, when the man is not there and they ask this person, I say this person fears God. You know what I mean? You know, people, some of the characters in the Bible, Remember, there were exceptions. Everybody wasn't like that. All this Joseph you hear, Daniel, you know, and so on. These were people who feared God. So I would say, you know, it's important. For me, you know, I think that is the secret of success. That's number one. Number two is, you know, get training. Get training. Training, and I'm using training broadly to mean education, to mean investing in yourself, to mean just, if you look at what has helped me the most, if you ask anybody, that's why you read my CV, right? Those things open doors. Mm. Not a, when people look at where you've been trained, they, you know, they, they respect yeah, that. They so like there's nothing like making an investment in yourself. Mm. I'm not saying it's only formal education, because I know that this video, other people listen to it. Yeah, some people get training from great um, 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 uh, players in the, in the trade that are in. Trade. You know what I mean? But the quality of training is incredibly important, right? And it's good to get it early, okay. right? So that's, that's number two. Number three is people. Just try and build relationships, networks, you know, in a way that is win-win. Mm. I'm not talking about a lot of people are looking for who can help them. Mm. The way to get help is to give help. What do I mean by that? Most people, yeah, most people, even the so-called important people you know. You know, I told you about the Kramer, who was my mentor, but eventually my relation with him became that of, you know, father and son, and eventually partners, equal partners even. You know, because the business we invested in was my idea and it was my trade that I had trained that I had gotten this training in. So he helped to bring the contacts. He helped to bring some of the capital. In fact, most of the capital, I brought very little, but I brought the trade. So I had trained myself. So it's that training that was my, 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 my value add or what you might call what I brought to the party. You know what I mean? So when you bring that, you find that like you will always be able to get both partners or mentors or, or, or partner or, or people you can do business with, yes. you know, both those who are senior to you mm. and those that are maybe maybe people who are looking up to you as well, you know. And then the other one I'll talk about is remember I've talked about three and I can go through them again if you want. Number four is giving. giving. Let me tell you what I mean by giving. You know, most people don't actually understand the principle or the laws of sowing and reaping. It's a natural law and it's a spiritual law, okay. right? It's a spiritual law. People reap what they sow. If I want to get help, let me give help. You may not be the person I help that will help me back. Mm. But, but, the, but, the, but God's universal laws are at work. So you find that like by giving to people, by helping people who need your help, right? You get help. Let me tell you a true story to illustrate this point. Many years ago, I have a younger brother. After I'd gone to business school, he wanted to do the same part. He even joined Arthur Anderson. Then he went into banking. You know, then he wanted to go to business school. He got into London business school. Now, he was looking for... Um, a way to pay the fees because fees was in pound sterling, you know, you know, where you're in Nigeria. At the time, I was trying to build a house because I was now working in a growing estate. Myself and my wife, we thought, you know, we've been renting. Wouldn't it be nice even if we built a small place of our own? So, because I was trying to build a house, you can imagine how much it takes to build a house. I felt, ah, let me start looking for. So, when my brother was going to go to school, I felt you've been banking. If you, you know, if you don't have the money, I borrow when I went. You go and borrow money and go while I look for money for my house. But I remember I had a dream and I got this strong urge to help him. That by helping him, I get help. So eventually, I provided a guarantee because I could afford to provide a guarantee through which he got money from one of the banks there. The bank needed somebody who had assets enough to provide a guarantee. I provided a guarantee and, and, and they gave him the money in there to go to school. Do you know that once I did that, this my mentor eventually also gave me a loan. In fact, I, was, I asked him for a guarantee because that was what I thought I should do. I asked him for a guarantee, but he gave me a loan to build my house and I repaid him. In other words, by investing here, I was getting from there. And I believe that like a lot of that happens just that we're not paying attention. So I'll say giving is important. Even when you're trying to do your own thing, who are you helping? Some entrepreneurs want to go from this level to the other, but remember the guys who are there. That's why I believe a lot in mentoring and in giving back. When you say I pastor, it's not because I'm not a full-time pastor, as you can tell. I, I work in the office, I'm a professional. But that opportunity to share my own experience, 
to teach the word of God, to show people the path to godliness, is an opportunity I cannot give up because it's an opportunity to give. So when you say giving, where, where do you specify? Does it necessarily mean money? No, it can be. No, it just no, no, no. It's service. It's, 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 not no. What, it's, not what, it's not just give me, give me, give me. You know what I mean? Okay. Whether it's, you know, some people want to listen to great preachers. Yes. And teach other people too. Some people want to get money. Give other people money too. Some people want to be mentored. Who are you mentoring? So it's the principle of giving. That is not what, you know, sacrifice. You are giving. And of course, you read more than you sow. Okay. Let me close with one more um, great uh, quotation on this from one of the devotional writers that I like a lot. He says, we do not reap when we sow. We do not reap when we sow. We may not reap where we sow, but we always reap what we sow. Therefore, sow what you need. Wow. Interesting. You know, we do not reap when we sow. We may not reap where we sow, but we always reap what we sow. Therefore, sow what you need. A lot of people think if you need money, then mine is the money you have not given anybody. Mm. You know, if you need um, love, then, you know, just be harassing people to say, why are you not loving me? If you need love, love them. They will love you back. Give love, yeah. So it's a very, it's a very sound principle. It's just like it's a contrarian principle. It works contrary to common sense or logic, mm. but it's very powerful. The same way a farmer goes to the farm with beans when he wants to reap beans or with yam when he wants to reap yam, yeah. Okay. That's, That's the way life is. That's the fourth one. You have a fifth one. Okay, fifth one, in terms of the, the principle for success, I would say the final one is probably um, take a long-term view, patience. In other words, do the, you know, have a, life is a marathon, right? It's not a 100-meter dash. Do not be discouraged how you start. It doesn't matter whether you start very well or not. The important thing is have staying power. Staying power is key. You know, and I believe in what I call the power of compound interest. I like things that compound over time. Let time work for you. Make time your friend. How do you make time your friend? Make sure that every day, what you're doing, you're adding value. You know, you know it's positive. Mm, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Whether it's, if it's even businesses, they grow in the process of time. Mm. Relationships grow in the process of time. Mm. Things succeed in the process of time. Yeah. So the most important thing is, you know, to make sure time is working for you. And I link principle one with principle five. Mm. Because I tell people that when God is on your side, mm. time is your friend. Interesting. When God is not on your side... Frankly, in the process of time, even if you seem like you're doing well, things can go all right. Things can go negative against you. You know, this is not superstition. This is just a principle that God rules in the affairs of men. Interesting. Now